So let's now prove that if CK is equals to C minus K star, that this means that X of T is real. So let's just write down the X of T formula back on again here. So that's um, we have our index running from minus infinity to plus infinity. And then we've got our coefficients and then we are multiplying them with the complex frequencies here. K, F1, T. So, so the trick is now, or the idea, because there's always a trick or an, or an idea in these proofs is, so we, we use the we use the phase representation of C K. Yeah, so we know that we can, we can that we can write down C K also as C K absolute value e two j v k, and that also we know that our C minus K star that this is c k e two minus j v k yeah so so what we do now is that we split this here up into the negative part and into the positive part yeah so we use this one here and we split the x of t formula into k greater than zero and k smaller than zero and we see already through this trick here so we we basically can get rid of this minus sign here just by just by splitting up the sequence here so let's do that so let's just write down our inverse Fourier transform again and this time that we just use positive coefficients. So we've got our CK. So that's the absolute value. So therefore this doesn't matter. So now we need to take care here of our positive part here of this. So this just runs from 1 to infinity here. So this just stays as in the original formula. So there's no difference. So now we just add our negative part to it, but we also run this with the same index here from 1 to infinity, so that they are both here identical here. So again, CK, because absolute value, there's no difference. And so what we do is now we just pull the negative sign in here, so that's the trick, and we pull the negative sign also in here, so that essentially we have the same here, just with a negative sign. So that's just negative. And then we've got the negative also added here. And what is missing out just now is our k equals 0. And we just sneak this in here with a c0 just as a constant before I forget this here. So what have we won with that? Um, so we see there's this nice symmetry here. So this term and these terms are just different from from their sign. So otherwise they are identical. And um, there's a quite a handy equation which is used quite a lot in digital signal processing. And so if we have something like that, um, and then e minus that j. So if we have a positive e to positive exponential, um, complex exponential, and then adding a, the same but with a negative sign here, then this is a cosine, or in this case, 2 the cosine. So we can rewrite this x of t as c0, then 2, and k equals 1 to infinity, CK, and now 
now we've got the cosine cosine z so cosine and the z is obviously here this here and this bit here and this one here and this bit here so that's our this here comprises our z Yeah, so they're feeding in here. So we just need to extract this here. So this um, phase factor and this 2 pi. So let's write this here first down. Because usually we have the phase factor as the second part. Um, so this one here. And then we're adding the VK as a phase factor. And so now we see that this result here, this is obviously real. That's a real number. Then the CK is real, the cosine is real, so the whole the whole equation here, this is all real. So we got this out because of the symmetry and the coefficients that these CKs here, that they are complex conjugates.